Can we share this? Okay, cool. So we got it here, Android. So yeah. the title will be Honey, there's a Python in my Android phone. All right, so okay. join me in clapping for James. Thank you. Okay, so today I'm be presenting as the title that I have, Honey, there's a Python in my Android phone. Now, what am I going to share over here on this thing? Okay. So first thing I like to talk about the title. So title probably, uh, I, I don't think quite numbers of you might heard of this movie. It was a very old movie. This uh, take, uh, took the titles come from here, Honey, I Strung the Kids, which is a movie in 1989. I remember I watched that when I was uh, 10, nine or 10, can't remember it, but I like this movie. And it got uh, one and two. So if you happen to know this movie, yeah, and uh, please watch that again. I still like this movie because it talks about a scientist who strung the family's member and there's a, a lot of interesting things that happens within the movie. Okay, so what's my talk about today? So my talk today about is we're trying to look at what's happening over the 20 years, especially on the computing powers that we have. Now, if you look at the left one, 486DX4, probably not many of you will know that, that was actually my first computer. So if you compare the specs of this computer, 20 years ago, this was, it was the best or probably the, power, the most powerful computers in town at that time, which is I think 1994. And not to mention that if you look at the specs right now, it's not even comparable to what we have nowadays with a small Android phone. And not to mention that it, it is very bulky. Think about that, the dimension is about uh, 50 centimeters per, to 50 centimeters. But compared to our phone today, what we got is a pocket size. And for us, uh, during the time in 1994, we have only those 6.22 together with Windows 3.11, which I think hardly got people hear of that nowadays, unless you are a vintage user or you know you try to play around with all this uh, retro computing, probably you heard of it. And for now, as compared back to Android, what we have is Android is so powerful, it can run all the applications that we know, anything, like from Facebook, YouTube, for anything that you have, okay? So compared to the size of what we have now and compared to back 20 years back, the power, the computing power has changed so much that we can't even think of it, and not to mention the size. However, there's a dilemma that we face nowadays with Android phones, because Android phone is not just an Android phone. It is also a computer, and not to mention that it is also a tracker. So you have all sorts of trackers on your phone, be it to be your weather, be it to be your behavior, be it to be your usage, or you know the app that you use, everything. Yes, it's a tracker by itself. And not to mention that on average, you change your phones for every two years. So automatically, in some ways, your phones will get lagged after two years. So how are we going to deal with the phones? Or in other words, how are we going to handle the phones after two years? Well, possibly what we're going to do that is we're going to throw away, not going to use it anymore, we just throw it away. Or maybe we'll just keep it in some darkest corner, like what we have now. For my case, I have three phones in my uh, drawer, which never been used, but still in good, quite good condition. Or perhaps some, some of you might want to use it again, like use it for a GPS application. Like let's say ways you want to use it because you just simply don't want to throw the phones away. Or some of them might just give it to parents or like parents, you know, uh, they might just want to use an old phone. But the key things that we are focusing on this thing over that is, can we actually program an Android phone? As in program means we can write a simple programs, like maybe a basic, or in this case, Python, or maybe Perl, or Shell, any simple uh, programming language that we have on Android phone. However, sadly, what we have for the Android phone currently, the available programming language will be Java-based, or Kotlin, or not to mention that the latest one will be Dark, C, uh, Dark uh, Flutter, or C Sharp. So for me, I find that this is not quite cool. Reason for that is, to me, I find that Java or Kotlin has a, uh, quite a high learning curve for us. Imagine that you're, when you try to build an app, okay, you need to have quite numbers of skill, uh, ranging from building the interface, writing the back end in Java, and so forth. So it turns out to be quite a difficult way for us to enjoy 
the fun of the programming, like maybe we just want to run a small uh, software or programs like in basic or Python on the phone. And not to mention that again, if you're trying to install an OSS other than Android, it will be very difficult. For example, think about that. If let's say you want to install OpenBSD or FreeBSD on an Android phone, I think that will be nearly impossible. Or not to mention that you try to install maybe Linux on it. It can be done, but it might be quite impossible or quite challenging to do so. So can we actually do a programming or maybe let's say Python on an Android phone? So these are the comments that I got when I talked to people about having a Python on an Android phone. The first would be, are you serious? Are you serious about that? Or second one would be, can you actually do that? And the third one, I got a comment actually from one of the, one of the guys when I visit Hong Kong that time and he mentioned that, well, you know, this is funny. We can't really, you know, if you can do that, that would be interesting for us to know, okay? So this is kind of comment that we got from that. Now, having spoken for so much, I haven't really introduced myself. My name is James. I am, I'm the co uh, chair for PyCon Malaysia. And by the way, uh, just to let you have a look at my t-shirt. We have a logo over there. This is my t-shirt uh, t for 2019. We have a t-shirt over there, okay? And I was the chair for PyCon Malaysia 2019. I was the co-chair for PyCon Malaysia 2018. And currently I'm working in an insurance company as a senior automation engineer. And the most important thing that I would like to bring uh, uh, on behalf of my chair for PyCon, uh, we call it PyCon APAC 2020 chair is, we are going to launch a PyCon APAC 2020 online in September. So do check out our website. And not to mention that uh, Guido is also joining our conference as well. So do check out our website. So that that day will be from 13 to uh, 16 September. So do check the updates from our website. Now let's get back to what we know about Python before we jump into Android. So for present state of Python, we know that Python actually can do a lot of things. So for example, we can actually build a simple script for system administration. And, and that was my background before that. We can also build a web app easily by Django or Flask or not to mention that we can write the backend as well using the Python as well. And of course, the most important thing is we can write a very simple interaction script on uh, RPI, a Raspberry Pi, uh, through the GPIO pings that, uh, I mean, uh, for their libraries. So of course, you know that uh, their libraries are written in Python. So it is very easy for us to interact with that. And this is why it makes the Raspberry Pi so popular among all the, you know, nearly all of the, those who programs with Python. And of course, MicroPython turn out also one of the key focus for us to write a very simple programs for the embedded systems such as uh, ESP32, ESP822, Microbit, you, you name it, and everything that uh, can be uh, written in MicroPython. So we actually can do a lot of things with Python nowadays based on what we know. But in terms of having a Python on Android, we don't have much of the choice except from getting an app that runs with Python interpreter. By means when I say this, Python interpreter, meaning that you had an app, you had an app that runs Python interpreter on it. It is not uh, something that like Raspberry Pi where you have something that allows you to interact with the API, okay? or in our words, interact with the um, sensors that you have for a phone. For, for example, gyroscope, for example, uh, the accelerometer, other sensors like GPS, or perhaps let's say uh, uh, API that allows you to make a phone call. We hardly have that, okay? So probably there's one there over there, which uh, that will be uh, the focus of my talk today, which I'm going to show that how we actually can do that. Okay, so that is one thing, okay? So yes, the answers for that is we actually have access on that Python, but sadly we don't have much of the application on that. So probably the question that uh, you like to ask me on that is, how actually can we do that? Or what kind of apps that allows us to do that? So the motivation I have to start with this project actually start from uh, 
four years back where I'm actually quite boring during my Christmas week where I'm thinking of catalog uh, cat cataloging my book, as you can see the books that I have right now at the back. So that was something that motivates me to do so. So when I look at my phone, my old phone, as, you mentioned, as I mentioned before, I have few phones in my drawer, I like to think of, okay, is it possible to allow me to use that phone to build a barcode scanner, to scan the ISBN barcode, and then it allows me to insert my book into my DB. So now we're in the database, okay? That was something that I have in my thought. Is it possible for me to do so? Because, you know, a phone has, allows us to scan the barcode easily. And not to mention that if you download the app, you can simply just scan the barcode and it returns you some kind of an ISBN 30 num number if you're a boot lover. So this is a, my motivation. How am I can I do that? So I begin to start my Google and then search. And then I find that somebody did that before. And the first line of the search actually interests me. Android barcode standard in six line of Python code. So I, I begin to wonder, how actually can you do that? Okay, how actually can you do that? So what kind of app that you use from that? So I decided to visit the uh, deep more, okay? And I find that actually there's two kind of app at that time, 2016, where first, uh, first app is called Android script scripting environment. And another one is a derivative of it is, or also you call it a, a, a variants of it is a scripting language for Android. Both are actually, uh, the first one actually is the first version of Google project. And then the other one, if I do not rem remember wrongly, is the second version of the, or probably you can say it's an enhanced version of the Android scripting environment. So what makes me interested with this project is that based on what I searched from Wikipedia, I found that actually it mentioned that this apps allows us to assess the script, you no, know, assess these uh, sensors from the, for the Android with a very simple uh, script like Perl, like shell script, and of course, in this case, that will be Python. So this uh, uh, interests me. So I begin to look at the code of uh, this mark first and realize that the coding is pretty, very, very simple. So just six line of code and then you scan it and it returns the ISBN and you use the ISBN to look for the books from Google. So simple enough. So this allows us to build an app and together with my student at that time, Vincent Liu, so we decided to come up with a script that allows us to scan a book ISBN number. And the script is named Snapbook because at that time, Snapchat was quite popular. So we decided to come up with a very cool name called Snapchat. And the Snap, uh, Snapchat is currently still running. Uh, it's on, still on my phone. And currently I'm still using uh, Snapbook to, uh, to snap my books for my collection. Okay. So this is the kind of thing. So if you if you want to know some personal story about the uh, Snapbook, you can you know you can reach out to me in the channels, and, and then I can share share you more about this Snapbook story. Okay, basically I still have the code for that. Okay, so after the Snapbooks, I find that a phone with so much sensors over there, it shouldn't be just used for only for barcode scanning, since we are allowed to access so many uh, sensors over there. So I decided to dig more further, okay? I decided to look at more further. I'll say, oh, okay, what can we see? So first thing that interests me is because of the accelerometer. So I decided to go further and write a simple script that allows me to get a accelerometer. So for instance, in this case, when I measure that, well, indeed, it's kind of close to 9.81, which, which normally what we know is about the accelerations of the gravitational uh, acceleration, sorry, 9.81 meter per second per second. Okay, so it's indeed very accurate in this case. So another question that pops up after I wrote the script is that I begin to wonder how Python actually in that app allows me to assess the Android API. And of course, another question is, if we write down that accelerometer and measures the acceleration of the gravity, how accurate or how precise the return data from that API, okay? So I begin to look at that when you look at back to the script that I have uh, previously, okay? There's two files, or perhaps there are two modules that allows us to look at it, which is androidhelper.py and, and then android.py. So next, let's just look at di dissect of the Android Helper. So for this class, 
let's focus one thing because they have a lot of things over there. So let's focus on one scan, scan barcode method over there. So for this scan barcode method over there, there's one interesting line over there, return.rpc scan barcode. Okay, now this is interesting. Return uh, RPC, interesting. So I begin to look at another file, which is android.py. So I'd like to know where does this uh, RPC comes from? So when I look at this in details, there's much more uh, interesting information that I can look, I can find, I mean, I can find from here. First thing, it passes the JSON data that we know from here through the socket, okay? This is one thing. So in other words, it means that actually for Python script to talk to the Android API is through the uh, socket. They pass the JSON to the socket and there's another socket at the Android end that allows it to, uh, to, to pass all the data in JSON form and then returns the API. So that's in quite interesting. And of course, on the Android app, this is very simple because in this case, when we send the JSON data over, it will just uh, activate, or you, you can say that initiate the intent for scan barcode. So from that, it will return the result that it scans from the barcode and it returns the data back to the channel. So as a conclusion, what we have with that is my Python script, let's say I write a Python script, I'll, I'll send this uh, my request or my data, my method as a data in JSON form through Android helper as RPC and then through the Android. And once Android receive the, in, uh, receive the request in data in JSON format, and then you process to read the data from the sensor. Once you got the data from the sensor, and then the same path, it goes back to this cycles. And then this is how we got the data from the Python script. So what kind of APIs that we have for that? As I mentioned, we have SRM meter, gyroscope, location, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, SMS, phone call, and you name it, okay? So there's interesting about here, which is uh, there's two Pythons, uh, the app that I actually recommend from that. And the one that we have is QPython. QPython is very interesting and uh, basically uh, you get two versions that you can download. One is from the Google uh, App Store and the other one is from the GitHub website. And if you want to have a hacker version where it allows you to access all the Android API, I recommend you to download it from the GitHub. So you can just go to uh, uh, Google QPython 3 and then uh, you can search for the GitHub from that. So pretty much you can get things from that. Okay, so what can we do with QPython in this case, since we mentioned that QPython is the nearly the only app that I know that allows me to access the Android MPI. So <clears throat> for that, QPython uh, it currently runs at the last, last one is 2.7 and 3.6. Of course, uh, Snapple is based on 2.5 and 2.6, which is written uh, earlier ago. Then the only things that probably we start from this QPython is simple, import Android helper. And that's how we start from that. And by the word, the Chinese word over here means it's for larger. It means that for every, for every mouse that you move, it always starts from the first step. So everything starts from the first step, import, in, uh, import Android helper is the first step. Now, the next slide that I'm going to show you over here is the traffic logger that I got from while I'm driving to my office. That was uh, before the COVID time, as I want to uh, try out for my uh, application on that. So this is how I drive. I drive. I drove all the way from this, and each point, all this point, are actually a point that I plot based on the data that I got from my phone. Okay. So this is how. So the way that I'm doing, uh, I did that was uh, I have my laptop uh, together with me and start have my laptop collecting the data from my phone and then process it and then I plot it with using a leaflet over here. So pretty much this is how I do it. Okay, so right now I'm going to have a little bit of demo time. Okay, just allows me a little bit of time to show that. And first thing, this is one thing that I'll show you from up. Okay, which is, um, thank you. Okay, so.
Okay, just allows me to do this. It works. Oops. Oops, some problems. Wrong errors. Strange. Okay, never mind. Just give me a little bit of time. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, never mind. Uh, I'll show you another one. Okay, so this is my leaflet face. Okay, so right now this is my location, uh, which is uh, near to my house. Okay, so I'm going to get the location. So this is my, my house actually, previously my point. And then right now I'm going to get the live uh, GPS uh, information for my phone. Okay, so some problems with that. Uh, not too sure what's going on. That's interesting. Okay, got it. Okay, so this is right now the GPS location compared to the one that I have over here. Okay, so if you can see, this is the real data that I got from that, from that, and you can also get the GPS as well as the uh, locations. So if you look at that, this is a point from the Q Python as well. So right now allows me to demonstrate with another one. Okay. So I hope this works. Yes, got it. Good. Okay, so if you look at that, this one, I just need to do it. Refresh it. Yeah, 
So if you look at that right now, if I turn my phone, if I turn my phone around, okay, but of course my phone is not quite sensitive nowadays because I drop it so many times, okay. So if I rotate this guy over there, so this is kind of uh, the real data or real time data that I got from the phone. So it, it rotate according to what I move. Okay, if I rotate that, let's do it slowly. Do it slowly again. So this is how I rotate and yeah, move around with this phone. Okay. Yep, so this is how it works from that. Now, of course, I do, uh, do not have the time for the SMS. So this is why I use another one, which is GPS, to represent that. Okay, so these are the reference. If you like to be interested, you can look at more reference for the QPython and all the others are uh, Android as well. With that, uh, I'd like to ask uh, questions. And thank you for the talk for today. Thank you, James. Any questions from the floor? Any questions? So I, I, I forgot to mention that uh, feel free to use the Q&A uh, setting on Zoom. So far, we don't have any questions. We still have four minutes to go. OK. So yeah. So if that is the case, then four minutes, I would like to use that to, you know, uh, to uh, promote my uh, event, Py Python, uh, PyCon APAC Online 2020. So as I mentioned before, you'll be on the uh, 13th of September to 16th of September. So that's first thing. And currently it's online and we're going to start our ticket sales hopefully by next week. Uh, we still have some uh, ten technicalities that to handle with. And for this time, this uh, PyCon APAC 2020 is a little bit different compared to other Py, uh, PyCon. Reason for that is we have a lot of different varieties of the activities we did. So not to mention that we have the uh, hackathon, first thing. We have the hackathon, we have the tutorial, and we do have a conference, and we have pan panel discussion this time. Because we find that uh, throughout the uh, panel discussion, we can get different kind of people to come to speak to us and to exchange different ideas. So this is one, one thing that we try on for this uh, PyCon APAC online. Mm -hmm. And also one thing, so, uh, as, uh, same as EuroPython, we uh, do invite, uh, we did manage to invite uh, Guido to come to us to speak to us, okay? So that will be a session, so we do have that. And of course, the, uh, we also managed to invite Keith Parker, if you know that, uh, who's the creator of the snack, okay? We got him as well, and then we also got uh, Audrey uh, Rowe Greenfield, who's also the author for the uh, two, two School of uh, Django. So if you know her, and yeah. So these are the few uh, figures that we, we got for the uh, our PyCon APAC online 2020 this time. So yeah, so do join us. Uh, Ticket will start selling. And while current, uh, the last update that I remember is uh, the ticket is about five USD, okay? So, uh, Things might change a little bit, but I'm not so sure. Hopefully, we'll still that. Uh, yeah. So this is kind of my event for that for the PyCon APAC 2020. Yeah. So my time up. So two minutes. All right. Thanks, James. Um, there's still no questions. Uh, if there's okay. any, any questions, go to the talk channel, which yep. is hashtag talk Python on Android. Uh, so okay. far, I I didn't see any questions uh, at the moment. So no, there are no questions. Oh, yeah, so, there is a questions demo effect. Okay. Mm, okay. Uh, oh, okay. So no, it's 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 not a question. So so I'll I'll move on to the next one. Thanks, James. Thank you. For, for the Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye.